everybody. We are ready to wrap up our currency converter. We need to actually get this thing to do what we asked it to do. First thing, uh, if you look on the amount, you could give it a negative number, and that makes no sense. Uh, so we're going to make sure we can only have positive numbers, and we don't want to include zero. That's kind of silly. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to set the default value. Um, I'm sorry, we're going to set the minimum value, and then we're going to clamp it so we can't go below. Let me just go ahead and close this and show you what to do. We're in app.py, and we're looking at the input float. So I'm going to add this, and I'm going to put this on a new line. And so we're going to put, um, what is it, min, min value. And we're going to put 0 0.01. And then we're also going to do min clamped. And I love VS Code and anything that gives you code hints because it's nice to know what we have available. And so there it is, min clamped, and then we're going to say true because that's a Boolean. It is true. We are going to clamp it. Let's try it, make sure that's working, and then uh, we need to add uh, our outputs and get going from there. So I'm going to try going down. Notice it stops. I can't go any further. All right. Convert doesn't do anything. That's our next step. We want to make it so we can convert. Um, but until, uh, until we are able to grab our information from these three input windows, we can't really make a conversion. And we also need a place to store the results, so we're going to put that underneath. So let's start by adding that, and it's just add text. So we're going to do the DPG, add text, and there we go. And then on here, I just want to remind you, on text, um, you don't, uh, you can't put the width on there. Not sure why not. I tried it before, got a crash, wouldn't let me. And, all right, we got that. Now, in order to do all of our calculations, we need to be able to grab information from here, make some calculation, make an API call, then we've got to modify the text at the bottom. So in order to do that, we need a tag on each of these items and from the tag then we can make our uh, conversions. So if you have a Dear Pi GUI app and you want to do what I'm saying, um, like create, uh, you know, connect to information in the GUI, which what's the point of doing a GUI if you can't actually do that? So we're going to do this right after we create the context. I'm going to put it in here, Let's put a little comment here, um, create some tags. And I'm going to put, oh, wait, 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 wait. So we're doing a uh, amount. So we're going to have this, we're going to call it amount ID. We're going to give it an ID. And then we're going to do dpg.generate UUID. I recommend you use this. Uh, where you use the code hint so you don't have to worry about misspelling. And it's generate underscore UUID. And it just gives a unique ID from the app that we can attach. And so you do, for example, amount ID. And in the input float amount, we're going to give it a tag. So I'm going to just put it right over here. I'm just going to put tag equals. And it's amount ID. So what happens here, and I'll just explain it, is it generates a unique number and it stores it with this variable, and then we say tag equals. The tag allows us to connect. Okay? And so you don't need to know what that amount happens to be. If you ever want to find out, you can run it in debug. I'll show you when we run it the next time. So we're going to do the same thing for the from currency to currency. So we're going to just put from cur ID and then I'll go ahead and fill that out. You don't need to watch me type. All right, at this point, we, uh, I've created the rest of these tags. And so we need to add it. I did uh, create this one. I named it results ID. All right, so then we're going to add the tags into each of these. And I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to hit enter tab and then, and then go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and do that and come back. All right, so now I've added all the tags. So you'll notice I have it here, tag. I have the amount ID on the from, it's from cur ID, on the to, it's to cur ID, and then add text tag amount equals ID. All right, so it's a lot of, a lot of content here, but uh, this is how we connect. 
All right, so at this point, now we have our convert button. We need to have it actually do some conversion. Okay, so uh, we're going to add a callback. And a callback is just a way of connecting a function with our button in this case. And you can add callbacks to anything that you can work with. Like, you know, if you wanted to, when you change the text, you could have a callback that did something when you did it. I, I don't know why. Uh, you might have a reason. In my case, I'm just doing it here, and we're just going to type convert. Okay, so convert is the label. It is also the callback. So this is a function we need to define. All right, so let's define our functions. We're going to put it right before we even create our context, def callback. Um, I might, or convert, excuse me. I might have uh, told in this video we're going to do a um, model view controller um, for, the, for the time's sake. I don't think I can get there. So I'm just going to create our one function inside of here. Um, and then, you know, if you get more complex, then, you know, you could go through there. I just found it's a lot easier to work with my app and the callback in the same file because I've got access to all of the IDs, et cetera. Okay, so, all right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're going to take the input and, um, well, so basically we're gonna get the amount and then we're gonna find what the rate is between the from and the to. And uh, let's just, uh, I'm gonna add pass here so we can test this out. Let's just run it again, because I just want to show you what we're going to do based on the app. So we're going to take the amount, and by the way, when we make an exchange and we do the get exchange rate, that rate will be based on one single unit. So one dollar, US dollar, will be somewhere about 0.9 euros or so. Okay, at this point, if I click convert, nothing happens because I wrote pass, and then, um, Let's just close it and keep working. So here's our doc string, get exchange rate multiplied by amount. So we're gonna get the amount. And the way we do this, dpg dot, it's real easy, it's get value. So get underscore value. And um, if you look here, we need to know uh, what is the item. And uh, so that's where we grab the tag. And, and it says it's an int, so apparently the tag unique ID is a, an integer. So we're going to put amount equals dpg.getValueAmount. And uh, I'm going to put my breakpoint in here. And then I'm going to do this for the from currency. And so notice earlier I had amount underscore ID. All right, um, now we're just going to do the from, the to. If it, if from wasn't a keyword, I would have the variable called from, but we have to add the little from underscore currency because if I write from, notice that's purple, that means it's a reserved keyword. Can't do that. All right, so it's dpg.getValue, and it's the same for the rest of these, so you don't need to see me typing that out. Okay, so here we go. Amount, from, to, cur. All right, I'm going to save my changes. We're going to run this in debug mode. Um, by the way, if you haven't done debug mode, you want to create a launch JSON file and just click the thing and it should work that way. So the app opens up and it's not till I click convert that it actually is going to trigger this breakpoint. I did save my changes. Well, apparently, maybe I already had this running. We'll try it one more time. Thought the breakpoint would work. Let's try one more time. And if it doesn't work, we'll add a little bit more code and then I think we can go from there. Yeah, it's not liking it. Okay, we'll do something else and then we'll come back and see if we can get that working. Uh, but not to worry. So what we want to do is, now we, we have an interesting part here. All right, um, we need to get the codes. And let me show you what I mean by that. Let me run this so you can see. Uh, if you look here, um, we have the we have the values, the code on the left, a dash, and then the currency on the right. So we have a code and a currency, right? So UNI is universe, for example. USD is United States dollar. In order to get our exchange rate, we only need the code that's on the left. So we're going to take advantage of Python strings, okay? So I'm going to write um, from cur. 
equals from cur. So we're taking that and we're going to do split. And in split, you do quotation mark. And what is the delimiter that splits it? Remember, that was the dash. Okay, this will give us two different items in a list. It'll be the, the currency on the left and then the, uh, sorry, the code on the left, currency on the right. So the code is the first item. So we're going to grab that. We're also going to strip it of any leading or trailing spaces. That's what strip does. So basically, we're getting only the codes or just say extract the codes. And this could be a function that you could put in the model, and that would actually make sense because you're not dealing with components, widgets from the Deer Pike GUI. All right, so we're going to do the same thing with the two, Kurt. There we go. All right, so let's get our exchange rate. And as you may recall, there was a status and a rate that it sends back, and that's in the model. And dot and it's uh, get exchange rate. And if you notice here, we need the from code and the to code. So that's the from cur and the to cur. And then let's just do a quick thing here. Let's just set the value of what rate is. So remember we had a get value. Now it's set value. And then I'm going to put, now to set it, we need to know, first of all, what are, where are we setting it? Then what are we setting it to? So this will be the output ID, or the results ID, excuse me. There it is. Results ID, and then I'm just going to put str because we need to convert the rate to a string. All right, and I'm going to save our changes. Let's try it in the debug mode, see if that actually triggers that. And if not, oh, we have a crash here. Uh, let's see what the crash is saying. Set value, set value item, ID value. Uh, okay, something's going wrong here. I'm guessing it has to do with the fact that there are two of these apps open. How about with only one? How about I close it and try it one more time? Oops. Let's just run it first of all, see if we get the results we're looking for. Ah, we still have a crash. All right, let's figure out what's going on. Well, that's kind of an obvious one. The tag amount ID, I set the tag on the add text to amount ID. So, hey, this happens, right? Results ID, save changes, run it again, and then we'll see if we get it to work. Did I run it? There it is. Convert. Ah, there we go. Okay, we're on we're on the right track. Uh, let's try it in debug mode and see if we can trigger that uh, breakpoint. And it doesn't. Okay, whatever. Uh, don't worry about it. All right, so uh, we've got now this working. Uh, the only thing we need to do is probably um, change the rate a little bit. So let's try to round the rate. All right, so we're going to take the rate, and we take it, and we run the round function. You pass it the rate. You give it the number of digits. If you don't, it converts it to an integer. We try to run it. Let's take a look and see what we get. We click convert. There we go, 0 0.96. All right, now if you want to, we might want to make it more precise, or we might not want to even do that. It's really going to be up to us. Okay, so at this point, um, you can see what other currency converters do and then figure that out. Or you can just not even round it at all. Now what we want to do is format the results. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the formatting key. We're going to put results uh, equals, and we're going to put a little string here. We're going to use the dot format format. So what you do is wherever you put curly brackets, so I'm going to put here in, um, oh, uh, yeah, so let's see how much time we got. Let's just go ahead and um, I'm going to try something here in just a moment uh, is equal to. Period. 
And on the format, we need to give it four variables for each one of these. Okay, so then we're going to put amount from cur exchange Oh, we haven't calculated our exchange. <laughs> we have our from and our cur. We need the exchange. Then I'll have get the amount. That's easy. It's just exchange. I can't believe I forgot this. Equals amount times rate. That's it. Now it likes exchange. And then we'll do the two cur. All right, so we're exchanging from one to the other, and then we're going to output the results. The nice thing about this is you don't have to convert anything to a string because when you use the dot format, any variable's value gets converted to a string and inserted. All right, let's try it and see if it works, and then I'm going to give you one last little thing to sort of clean it up. I'm going to click convert one US dollar is equal to 0.96 euros. Actually, that's pretty good. If you wanted to write United States dollar, you could, or Euro, you could, or you could do a lot more, like you could create all the symbols for each of these. I'm actually not going to go over that. I think we're going to just end here. This is pretty good. Uh, I know I haven't gone over how to style any of this, make it larger. Um, maybe I'll save that for another tutorial. Uh, but here in the end, I just want to like leave you with the final function. Um, that we do. It's a little bit blown up a little bit, so I'm going to go back here and add it here, get the exchange like so, and then format the results and format and display. So thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like this video tutorial, maybe I'll uh, make some more uh, related to Deer Pie GUI. If I do, I'll probably do some styling. So thank you so much for watching. And